Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Today we're going to be introducing you to the concept of chromatography. So chromatography um, is a a technique of uh, sorry a, a separation technique. Okay, you may remember it from encountering it in in year seven. So a technique for separating complex mixtures based on um, look we're we're going to look at two I two kind of related concepts here. So separation technique by um, its attraction, so so separation by attraction, um, and we'll unpack this in a lot more detail in a section, and also separation due to sol solubility and what we might call travel time. Okay, so I want you to picture a column. Okay, so it's standing up vertically like a burette. Okay. So perhaps picture it like this. Okay, and so what we do is that we fill up this column with um, material like cotton wool or like sand or something like that. Okay, <clears throat> and we drop in a complicated uh, drop in a mixture. Okay, so this is the us dropping in that mixture. Okay, loading it up at the top here. Okay, so it's now present at the top of our column. What we're going to see is that gradually, so let, let's say that this is a, this mixture that we've added in is a mixture of black and blue. Okay, so over time, what we're going to see is, so we started off with a mixture here. As we get a bit further down, we get black and blue becoming a little more separate. As we get a bit further down, we get black and blue a little bit more separate. As we travel our way down in successive stages, black and blue get progressively further and further away from one another until eventually the blue, I realize you can't see that all that well. Let's see if this is a bit easier to tell. The blue has has separated out the bottom. Okay, it actually has is dripping through and can be collected in a container, or you know collected in some way. And then once we've collected that one, we can take that out, and then it will be the black that drips through into a container, and so on. Okay, so what? has happened in this situation that we started off with a mixture that as it's progressed downwards that the black and blue have separated apart from one another okay so a little bit like you might see something like sprinters at the olympics that they start off at the same point but then based on different speeds you know usain bolt versus you know i kind of say mr kuiper right it'd be a bit embarrassing for me um you know that we start off at different speeds, start off at the same point, but because of different speeds, that then one reaches the end first, and that if you wanted to then kind of look at, you know, collect people based on how quickly they, you know, once they pass the the finish line, you can collect them one by one, more or less, okay, based on the fact that over that distance that they have become separate from one another, um, that's how we pick out a winner, okay. So in chromatography, we have essentially two um, two kind of parts to it, or two two kind of kind of key components. What we call a stationary phase, or medium, and a mobile phase. Okay, so we talked about this idea that we're separating based on um, attraction, and we're separating based on solubility. Okay. Um, now, so the stationary phase is typically, so we're saying, so a solid material, okay, so it could be sand, silica, um, it could be um, <clears throat> cotton wool, it could be cellulose, like in paper chromatography, okay, so it's some form of sol um, sol uh, solid material, okay, but the key thing is that it is, it is stationary. Okay, so the idea that it is it's um, it's fixed. Okay, the mobile phase is a mobile 
um, say like a fluid. So it might be um, it might be liquid, or it could be gas. Fluid in the sense that it's able to move, not necessarily just fixated on something watery. Okay, so it travels um, through or over the stationary phase, uh, over slash past, I might also say, depending on exactly what what type of chromatography we're talking about. That, it inter that there's an interaction with or kind of a, a, um, a, a passing by the, the stationary phase, that there's an in that, that type of interaction um, is going to affect how the separation occurs. Okay, so this mobile phase which travels through over past the stationary phase, so it might be um, water-based, it might be an organic solvent, um, or it could be um, a gas like argon or helium or nitrogen gas. We'll see, we're going to talk about gas chromatography as a, as a key component in forensics. Um, so that the, the key idea here is that a stationary phase or a solid kind of um, fixed material, um, that then um, we have a mobile phase which kind of travels past it. So if we kind of revisit, have a look at over these, these separation principles over here, now that we've kind of introduced this terminology, we can then say, okay, that it can be separated based on attraction to the stationary phase. And we can say solubility um, or, yeah, so solubility in the mobile phase. So it will, separation will be involved in... Um, one or both of these um, aspects, depending on the type of chromatography that we're talking about, okay? Um, because there are multiple types of chromatography that that we encounter in forensics, okay? So we've got gas chromatography. I'll list out some more of these. So we have, um, I've just made a small amendment here as well. So gas liquid chromatography high performance or um, high pressure liquid chromatography known as HPLC. This is um, GLC, more often just known as GC for short. We've got paper chromatography, ion chromatography, thin layer chromatography. Okay, we might even then just kind of talk about uh, column chromatography. Okay, so that we've got lots of different variations on this one type of separation technique, depending on what stationary phase that we pick, what mobile phase that we pick, and how we might physically structure it. Do we have it in a thin column that, that the substance gets pumped through, um, which is kind of what we see in these two, um, in, and also in ion chromatography. In paper and thin layer chromatography, we've actually spread out the stationary phase in a flat kind of wide kind of strip that then the mobile phase then travels through by capillary action. Chromato column chromatography, like what I was illustrating just over here before, you know, where it's actually being used by gravity and it's kind of working its way down through a packed column. Um, so that exactly how we set it up um, will then affect what types of substances we can separate and how it will separate them, um, what, um, yeah, so, so how we need to set it up to make it work um, and what its benefits and drawbacks are. Okay, so in this um, section of our topic, we're going to be, we're going to talk a bit more specifically about these two first examples because they have a lot more relevance in forensics. Um, and then we'll also be conducting some first-hand investigations to, inve um, to, to test out some variables to do with chromatography. Okay, um, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.